What's up folks, it's Ryan here. Today we're gonna be making pizza, because who doesn't love pizza? In today's video, I'm gonna make the pizza dough from scratch, we're gonna do the pizza sauce, we're gonna do some mushrooms on top. I'm gonna keep this one pretty vegetarian friendly. We're gonna do a nice creamy garlicky bechamel with a roux to thicken it, which is just flour and butter. I've never used this pizza dough recipe before, but I've done a little bit of research. I think this one's gonna come out nice and crispy, and we're actually gonna be baking this in the cast iron today. The reason I want to use a cast iron is because I want to keep the heat centralized. Cast iron is really good for heat retention. So I'm looking for a nice crispy crust on the bottom of the pizza. So I'm going to preheat the cast iron and then I'm going to lay in the pizza dough nice and flat, put on my toppings and bake it right away from there. So that means we've got to get our pizza dough going first thing. We got to let it proof, beat it out, roll it out, let it rest. Roll it out again. While we're resting the dough, we're gonna be making all of our toppings, our sauce. So we got all of our mise en place here. We've got some kosher salt, some AP flour, some yeast, a little bit of sugar, just for some sweetness in the dough. And we're gonna add a little bit of semolina to this dough just for funsies. I think it gives a nice texture. We're gonna start our dough with two cups of flour. We're actually gonna be making enough dough for two pizzas today, just because it's a little bit easier to do this in bulk. And the pizza dough freezes relatively well. We're gonna take about 200 grams of warm water. We're gonna do a tablespoon of olive oil. We're gonna do a teaspoon of salt. And a teaspoon of sugar. And then finally, we're just gonna add in our yeast. Which will be three quarters of a teaspoon. Bit of a mixy. And when your dough looks something like this, the gluten is forming, we can pull it out of the stand mixer, let it rest for 15 minutes, and then we'll knead it one more time before the final bulk fermentation. You can see that the gluten hasn't formed, but it's still holding its shape pretty well. So I'm just gonna cover it with some cling wrap, and then we're just gonna let it rest for a little bit, and then re-knead it, form it into like another ball, and then proof it. Oh, and I uh, oiled it with a little bit more olive oil before putting on the cling wrap because I don't want the cling wrap to stick. So we let the dough rest for a little bit. I'm just gonna work it a little bit more. I've already touched it a bit off camera, but I think that we're just gonna, you know, get the gluten developing so it's nice and elastic. It's already starting to get there just from the rest and my few hand movements. But yeah, we're just gonna work it a little bit more. We're gonna get a nice consistency where it's nice and tight. And then we're gonna slap it into a bowl with some olive oil, a lid, and then we're gonna head out to the store and go pick up some mushrooms. We're gonna head to the store and we're gonna pick up some mushrooms, some butter, some cream, all the stuff that we need for our sauce. We're back from the store, we've got our mushrooms. Now we're gonna just take this dough. It's grown quite a bit in size. It's nice and happy. When I press it, the dimples kind of stay there. Um, this is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for it to be too reboundy. I wanted to kind of have a lot of aeration in the dough. We're gonna pound it out. We're gonna divide it in half. Now the dough itself is a little bit more firm. You can see it bounces back and it doesn't fall like the dough did before. So this is what I'm looking for. Right now the gluten's quite firm, so I'm just gonna cover it in some saran wrap and let it rest. Now we're just gonna take our cast iron. We're gonna shove it into our oven that's preheating to 450 degrees Celsius. No, Celsius, holy shit, that's high. 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna do a not so traditional bechamel. We're gonna take our onions, we're gonna saute them down with some garlic and some shallots. We're gonna get a nice goldeny color on them. I want a little bit of a caramelization to bring out a bit of sweetness. And then we're gonna add in some chopped mushrooms and then our cream and then our roux. This is gonna make it a nice creamy, mushroomy kind of base for the sauce. And it's already super thick. I haven't blended in any of these chunky bits. But I think I'm not going to today. I'm just gonna leave it nice and go natural for on top of the pizza, maybe some texture bits. So yeah, this is, this sauce just needs to get a little bit of a taste and a season, and then we'll go from there.
And we'll spread the sauce out to the edges. And into the oven. So I just pulled the pizza out. I added some mozzarella when I put in the pizza. I just forgot to film it. Um, when the crispy edges are starting to show, you can tell that it's, you know, getting pretty close. So then now I'm just gonna add in my sauteed mushrooms, give it one final heat, and then that's it. All right, now the pizza's had a little bit of time to rest. The crust has come up nicely. I can tell it's already like separating from the pan when I jiggle it. Like I can feel it sliding around. So I know it's not stuck. We're just gonna finish her with a little bit of truffle oil. What a beautiful pie. Crispy all the way through the bottom. You don't need a pizza oven, you just need a cast iron. Oh. Say something. It's hot, it's hot, it's <laughs> hot. Delicious pizza. Anyways guys, anyways guys, that's it for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed, yeah. Anyways guys, that's it for this video, hope you enjoyed. And this is a pretty easy pizza recipe, so you can try it out for yourself. Cheers. Crispy.